Sex is about power. Well, sometimes anyways. Sometimes sex is about love. Sometimes sex is about fun. Sometimes sex is a means to an end. And sometimes sex is about being really, really horny. See, it's different for everybody. And something that I think we really, really do a bad job of understanding in our society is <clears throat> subtext. And I think that that has led to a lot of misunderstandings about the place of aggressively sexual women in the feminist movement. So lately we've seen the question arise of can you be aggressively and overtly sexual and still be either a feminist or an asset to the feminist movement if you're a woman or a femme presenting person? Some people, a lot of people, like to say no, you can't. That you're dragging women back, that you are playing into what men want from you, that you are encouraging young women to be mindless sex dolls. Well, I firmly disagree, and today I'm going to break down why. First of all, the entire assertion of you're just giving men what they want is pretty gross. Sex and sexual imagery are not rewards, and they're not prizes to be metered out. If men like sexual things, that's okay. It's fine. We treat it as though it's something that we're supposed to keep away from men, when it should be a mutually enjoyable thing. We treat it as though if men see you in a sexual way, it's guaranteed that they're not going to respect you or view you as a whole person. Therefore, the onus is on you to keep that imagery away and out of the public eye at all costs. I think this is ridiculous. I think it's incredibly sexist both to men and to women. You treat men like children. You treat them like mindless animals and bad people while simultaneously placing the blame on women for this reality that you hold in your head. That's wrong. Yes, there are the Ben Shapiros of the world. There are the men who see things like WAP and go, well, wow, you know, this is what feminism fought for. <laughs> These are whole rounded individuals, real human beings. Those people are bigots that need to be re-educated, not a standard for which we should base how all human behavior operates. Part of being a whole rounded human being is having sexual experiences. Sorry, that's just reality. If you want women to be whole rounded human beings, then telling them that they have to repress their sexual nature is really kind of counterproductive. If I go on camera and I really emphasize that I'm a little fuck doll and I don't have anything important to say, one, that's probably a kink, let's be real, but two, that's a very different messaging than if I go on camera and I'm dressed like this and I talk to you about the different schools of feminist thought. Messaging matters. And with Megan and Cardi specifically, the subtext of how they are presenting themselves as sexual people matters. There's this idea that I encountered that um, they are specifically playing into the roles that the rap industry has set for them where women are required to be sexual objects. I think this is pretty funny because if you've ever listened to anything Megan Thee Stallion has ever released, you would know that some of her most famous songs include lines like, yeah, he's my dog, he's gonna sit down and listen, call him a trick and he won't get offended. She has lines like, I'm all in his head and it's got nothing to do with this body. Yeah, you walk in the room, I'm giving commands. 
I'm the captain and he's the lieutenant. This is a person that people are going to line up to lick her boot, and if they don't like it, they can kick rocks. This is not someone who is falling in line because the rap label told her, hey, you need to be sexual. If the rap label told her, hey, you need to be sexual, she would be sexual and she would sing her songs or whatever, but that's not what's happening. This is who Megan is. <laughs> that kind of like, you, you're gonna do what I want, fuck you, pay me. You can't fake that. That's an attitude, that's, that's very real. She's a dom through and through, and it's not really all that acceptable to be in public and to be a woman who is very sexual and who says, I don't care if you don't like it. This is how it is, and you're going to deal with it. That's not exactly a position that weak-minded women take. So the context matters, and I think any young woman reading Megan Thee Stallion's lyrics is going to go, oh, make his pockets hurt, not, I guess I must lay on my back now and let men do with me what they please. That's not the message that anyone is getting from Megan's songs. So you can say, hey, fuck you, pay me, make his pockets hurt. These are problems, right? We need to phrase sex as an enjoyable experience for everyone, right? Like maybe we don't need to swing so far in the other direction where we're bordering on things that less educated people can point to or people with agendas can point to and say female supremacy. You can make that argument. Um, and I would be willing to listen to arguments like that, but that's a very different conversation than being an overly sexualized woman is really just kind of playing into patriarchal wants and still puts forth a message of subjugation. It's very, very hard to say that you are agreeing that women should have a place when every message that you put forth is a... Uh, I'm gonna date a bunch of men, and all the men that I'm gonna date can either get with the program or they can get out. These ideas, these attitudes, they're not really compatible. So the more we put forward the idea that women being sexual somehow pushes women back, the longer we prolong this idea that women have sexual rules and that women have sexual roles that men don't have, the more that we blame women for men's reactionary misogyny, the more we continue to reinforce misogyny and patriarchy. If you're doing this from a reactionary conservative perspective, well, I mean, that's to be expected. But if you're doing this from a liberal or a leftist or a feminist perspective, you're part of the problem. You're not helping. Reactionary feminists who would have us not being sexually liberated or being sexually conservative certainly don't speak for all of us. And they're giving off really strong SWERF vibes the younger generations of women tend to be much more sexually liberated. Going back to what Megan says, it's 2020. I'm not fixing to argue about twerking. I won't debase myself to the point of having to justify why I get to express a part of the human experience because I am a whole, rounded, complete person. And that's just all there is to it. Okay, guys. Until next time.